Perch are a super aggressive predator, covered in stripes with big spiky fins and an attitude to match their impressive appearance. They're an incredible species of fish to target on any method, but this video in particular is going to be about drop shot and lure fishing for perch. If you want to catch big perch, you've come to the right place because this video is going to teach you how to tie a drop shot rig, how to set up a soft plastic lure on a jig head, and also how to work these lures. So stick around and let's get to it. We recently fished a place called Charlie's Lake, somewhere known to produce big, big perch over the last few seasons. We were joined by two expert perch anglers, Adam and Brett, who solely target perch with lures. So they were very interested to see who would catch the most, given that I chose to start my day using real worms on a drop shot rig. Using real worms has often produced us bites on days where nothing else has worked. And on this particular session, we were fishing a relatively small lake, which I thought was gonna be very difficult. So I decided to start the day using real worms on the drop shot. Oh, there's one. That's my first one. <laughs> Well, this isn't one of the monster perch that live in this day, but it's a it's the first fish. <laughs> that perch is actually the same length as my worm. Baby. That fish must feel like it's got paparazzi all around it. Yes. <laughs> and then don't look over there because there's another one. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> Alex decided to use a soft plastic drop shot lure to see if that would tempt a slightly larger fish to bite. You got one? Yeah. On the lure? On the lure. Another baby one. Again, the tiny perch were on it instantly. We were going to have to rethink our tactics. Drop shotting with worms was producing good numbers of fish, but they were all very small. So we decided to try covering a little bit more water and switching over to a soft plastic lure on a jig head. Using a lure like this means that you can cast further and retrieve it quicker than when drop shotting. These lures wiggle on the retrieve, which makes them perfect for casting around and finding the fish. To set up a lure like this, you just need a soft plastic lure and a jig head. We normally use jig heads of between 5 and 10 grams and a lure of around 7 centimetres. At times we'll use a larger jig head of 20 grams or so, but that's normally when fishing from a boat, dropping the lure down into very deep water. Firstly, take your soft plastic lure and line it up with the jig head. By doing this you can see exactly where the hook needs to exit the lure. Make a small nick in the lure to mark it. Thread the lure onto the hook until you reach the mark that you have made. Pop the hook point out and push the lure round to the weight on the jig head. Now this lure is ready to fish with. But because of the size of the lure and the speed that you tend to retrieve it, it can often attract the attentions of pike. And that's why if there are pike in the water that you're planning on fishing, definitely fish it with a metal trace to avoid getting bitten off. Obviously, if you're 100% certain that there are no pike in the water that you're fishing, maybe no pike have been stocked, or they just don't really exist in the particular body of water that you're at, then you can get away with using fluorocarbon rather than a metal trace but you definitely want to use metal if there are pike around. To tie up a trace, you will need some wire material. Look for a fairly thin one if possible. You'll also need a micro swivel, a link clip like this one, some crimps and a crimping tool. Scissors or wire cutters will also be essential. My crimp tool has actually got wire cutters on the end, which is pretty handy. 
First cut off around 8 to 10 inches of wire. Thread on a crimp and then pass the wire through the eye of the link clip. Then pass the wire back through the crimp and tighten it down towards the clip. A small gap leaves room for movement. Next, take your crimping tool and compress the metal crimp to trap the material tightly in place. It is important to use a specific crimping tool rather than pliers as the crimp must be compressed to the correct amount to ensure total strength. Trim the tag end and then repeat the process at the other end of the trace but with a micro swivel. With a trace like this tied up, all you'll need to do is tie your braid to the swivel at one end of the trace, clip on a lure and you're ready to get fishing. When using a lure like this, we've found a good retrieve is as follows. Cast out and let the lure sink all the way to the bottom. Do a couple of quick turns of the reel to pull the lure up and away from the bottom and then let it fall back down again. Reel a couple of times again and let it fall back down. The key is to keep the tension in the line as the lure is falling because we've had a lot of gentle little bites as that lure is falling through the water. It's worth striking and setting the hook at any of those little taps or knocks on the rod tip because any of those little indications could be perched taking your lure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow, yes. Yeah, this is a better one. Oh, yeah. Oh my goodness, Alex. No, no. <laughs> no. I slipped. No. I slipped. No. No. Carl. No. no. Oh. That was chunky, man. That was a nice one. That was chunky. That was a good perch and it came off and Carl just fell in the lake. <laughs> Although we sadly lost that fish, it wasn't long before the lure produced another bite. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, I've got something decent. He's the biggest one of the day. They're getting a bit bigger, Alex. That did. He's gone. I'm excited to try and hook up into another one of those big ones that I hooked earlier. I'm still gutted about that. You're still gutted, I'm still soaking yeah. wet. We started the day fishing for perch with drop shot tactics. I had a soft plastic lure on the drop shot. Carl tried a real worm, but we soon realized that there are thousands and thousands of small perch in this lake. And we simply couldn't do a cast without the worm being stolen or just catching one of those small ones. So I switched tactics. I've just put on a five gram jig head and then a soft plastic lure, which is just big enough so that those small perch can't actually get the hook in their mouth. They'll nibble at the end, but they won't actually take the whole thing. And since I've changed, I hooked into a really nice one earlier and also just had a, a slightly big one as well. So the change of tactics has worked. Less fish, but they have been bigger, so we're just going to keep at it. What are you going to do, Carl? You're going to change. Have you switched over to a big one? Yeah, I've got a lure like that on my rod as well. I think that's going to be the way. Yeah. We've even got some even bigger ones as well, so we can switch to those later. I've got crayfish lures as well, which I want to try. They'll probably work because apparently there are crayfish in this lake, and yeah. the perch love eating crayfish. That's probably why Especially they've got so small, big. Especially small crayfish. Yeah. Like the big ones, they get too big to eat, but yeah. the baby crayfish are food for perch. Yep. Let's keep casting. We've got to catch, before the today is out, we've got to catch a three pound perch. Whoa, three pounds. Setting the bar high. Ooh, this one's moving far. Well, I was saying that they, this lure was catching the bigger one. It is important when fishing for perch, no matter what type of lure you're using, that you set the hook when you get a bite. Perch have got quite hard mouths and if you don't set that hook with a good strong strike, 
um, it's quite likely that the, that the hook won't properly penetrate in the fish's mouth and you, you'll often lose them as they shake their head on the surface. If you don't pull uh, at least a little bit hard when you first hook the fish, it's quite likely that the fish will rise up to the surface, shake its head and the hook will fall out. So a good little strike um, should ensure that you don't lose too many. Maybe two, probably a pound and three quarters. Adam was also catching the odd fish on the lures and then out of nowhere we heard a shout from down the bank. Brett got himself a big one. <laughs> That's a problem. Nice isn't there? job. <laughs> well, that is a belt, isn't it? Yeah, we get a couple of picks from it. No. Yeah, I'm in the cup. <laughs> oh, beauty. Nice job. Well, I'm glad someone here could catch one of the big ones. <laughs> there is time. Look at that. Perch are impressive. Big dorsal fin and bright red fins. Oh, what a nice fish. Later in the day, the fishing became increasingly difficult. And when those perch don't want to chase a fast moving lure, it's often a good idea to switch over to drop shot and work your lure a lot slower. I decided to switch back to the drop shot rig and it ended up paying off. Now we're going to show you how to tie a drop shot rig. To set it up, you will need some fluorocarbon. Fluoro is a tough and transparent line material. We tend to use five pound breaking strain if the water is free of weed or obstacles, but if the fish are really big and there's loads of branches, tree roots and the like, then 10 pound fluorocarbon is better suited. Along with a spool of fluoro, you'll also need a hook. We normally use something between a size eight to a size four. A size eight is good for small soft plastic lures, but larger sizes come in handy when using bigger lures or bunches of worms. Lastly, you'll need a drop shot weight. These come in a range of sizes. Pick yours depending on the depth of the water. The deeper the lake or river is, the larger weight you'll need to stay in contact with the lure. Firstly, cut off around a meter of fluorocarbon. Pass the hook onto your line and thread it down around halfway down the line. Create a loop with the hook hanging at the bottom of it. Then create another loop with the line and begin to pass it through the first loop. Ensure that the hook stays hanging at the bottom while you pass the loop around four or five times. Then you have to put the hook eye through the new loop. Pinch it in place to ensure the eye doesn't come out of the loop. Moisten the knot and then begin to tighten it down, pulling it on both ends evenly. Tweak the hook and knot down tight the position should be like this. The angle of the hook is such that when a fish takes your bait, it's very likely to get hooked. Tying this knot isn't easy, and at first it will be a little bit tricky, but it's definitely worth the effort as it creates much better presentation than a Palomar knot. The most important thing with a drop shot rig is the angle of the hook. If that hook is upside down, with the point facing the floor, or if it's sort of fallen to one side on the rig, it's far less likely to hook the fish's mouth when uh, a, a perch actually takes your lure. By using the knot that we just showed you, it ensures that that hook is facing upwards at all times and that should a fish take the bait, it's definitely uh, at a prime position to hook that fish. With the hook attached, you'll now want to position your drop shot weight just beneath the hook. When we're casting quite far out, for example on a large reservoir, we like to use a gap of around 9 to 12 inches between the weight and the hook. Whereas when we're fishing a lot closer in, underneath the rod tip, we'll go for around six inches of separation between the weight and the hook. The reason for this difference is because the further out you fish, the more acute your line angle becomes. As that angle is more acute, the lure becomes closer to the lake bed. The only other time where we'll use quite a long gap between the uh, weight and the hook is if we're trying to twitch the lure or worm over some weeds using a long length between the weight and the hook enables you to suspend your bait up and above that low lying weed. To work a lure on a drop shot, you don't really need to impart very much action into that lure. The drop shot is not designed for moving the lure right up and down through the water or covering much water at all, to be honest. It tends to be a method where you cast it out, 
let it sink down to the bottom, and then very, very gently vibrate your rod tip. Uh, the aim is to make that small lure just jiggle almost on the spot as if it's a small injured fish. You can then reel the rod down, um, tighten up the line, and then just make tiny little twitches back towards you again. The best way to fish the drop shot is quite slow and it can at times be a little bit boring, but it's probably the best way to winkle out fish that are not keen on chasing fast moving lures. It's quite a, um, what's the word? It's quite a... Subtle. There's another word. Sellotape? No, it doesn't begin with S. Sausage? No, it doesn't begin with S. Sandwich? It doesn't begin with S. Snake. It's quite a slow and subtle presentation, which requires quite a lot of finesse, but it's definitely worth mastering for those times where perch don't want to chase the lure. If you're curious about the type of kit we use for our perch fishing, a seven foot rod is pretty much ideal. Remember, you'll be holding it at all times, so a relatively light rod is helpful. A 1,000 or 2,000 size spinning reel is ideal, and we tend to use 10 pound braid on there for a nice balanced setup. Back at the lake, the light was now fading, but I managed to get one more bite before heading home. Look at that. What a beauty. Thanks for watching the video. Feel free to check out one of the other perch fishing videos that we've made on screen now. Hopefully you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.